there have been a lot of uh, comparisons uh, between this outbreak with uh, other things that we have been, uh, happened in the past. And I think these comparisons can be very, very useful if uh, we understand what we are comparing with. So, for example, one of the comparisons has been with, uh, with uh, influenza. So influenza caused pandemics. I mean, we have pandemic, uh, influen uh, pandemics every 30 years in flu. We have from 1918, 57, 68, and 2009 was the last one. And uh, we know that this is a new virus arriving to the population, and the effects can be uh, very devastating. But uh, one of the comparisons that people have been using is, with, um, is the seasonal influenza, so the flu that we get every year. So um, flu and coronaviruses, they are very, very different viruses, very, very different. So they share basically nothing about uh, their structure, how they're evolving, and uh, many different features. And they spread some of those, I mean, very fast in the population. And there are certain things that we can use from this comparison and some of those that we cannot use. So, for example, when comparing about uh, the mortality rates, uh, rates of uh, seasonal flu, with these ones, they are very, very different. That was very clear from the beginning, and this is what we are observing in basically every country that now we have data. So um, I think the comparisons with influenza have to be understood. I mean, that there are certain things that we can compare, and there are many others that we cannot. Other comparison with influenza is with the pandemic influenza. So um, pandemic influenza happens every 30 years, and we have good data since 1918. It was a very devastating uh, event. Many people died. Uh, we know that uh, there the case fatality rate was very, very high. And uh, we learned many things about different uh, social distancing measures that now, I mean, we are implementing. So I think this, this has been a very, very useful uh, comparison. But uh, also, I mean, we have to take into account that they are very different viruses and uh, they are very different. It's a very different situation. So in 1918, uh, people didn't know that it was uh, flu was caused by a virus. They didn't know very well, I mean, uh, what the virus was causing, how this virus um, was going around and causing some disease. So um, now, I mean, we know, I mean, it was sequenced very, uh, very easy, uh, very, very soon. We know from the very beginning many of the things about this virus, its origin, how it's spreading. Um, vaccines and uh, the procedures to develop vaccines and medication and clinical trials have started very fast. And the medical situation that we have right now is not the same thing as 1918. Also in 1918, uh, many people died. And they were usually the young. I mean, people in the 20s and the 30s and you know, 40s. And in this one, the pattern of, of, of mortality is very, very different. We see now that it's usually the elderly and people over 60, 70, or people with some uh, preconditions. So this comparison can be very useful, but in some aspects, but it could be also kind of a little bit confusing in others. We know also that in the case fatality rate of, uh, of, the, of the 1918 was higher than this one, uh, at least with the data that we have. So uh, we think, I mean, we have, uh, as far as goes, a milder version of that. I mean, a virus a version of, an, of a pandemic but um, there are certain things that we can learn from our previous experience. Yeah, there is this um, kind of uh, looking at the people who, who is dying, we observe a clear pattern, usually the elderly. They, are, um, they have higher uh, fatality rates. And um, some people think that this is kind of a disease of only the, the elderly. And one of the things that we are learning right now is that this is not the case. I mean, there are many young adults that they have a very severe disease, sometimes fatal disease, and um, we don't understand uh, why it happens. It's not uh, as common as it's in, in, the, in the elderly, but it happens, and, and there are many cases. And some cases, they are associated to some uh, comorbidities, uh, diabetes or uh, high blood pressure or uh, some other things. But... Um, the young population can be affected also, and some of those, I mean, it can be a very severe disease. We are also learning some cases with some weird diseases like um, Kawasaki. They are kind of immune-related uh, type of diseases. We don't know very well the origin of, of this disease. We don't understand how it's related with, uh, to COVID, but um, they have been observed in several countries that uh, very young kids, I mean, they can get a severe um, disease uh, a very strange disease that this has not been very well studied. 
So uh, this is not something that is only affecting the elderly, and only the elderly has to be worried about that. This is something that is affecting all of us. And there's also the, the concept that we have to be responsible. I mean, if we want to take care of our elderly and people who are more susceptible to, to the disease, we have to take our responsibility as a society. And uh, this is our part that we have to play, the younger and the, and the, and the elderly, to make sure that this virus is not spreading and affecting the, the more uh, sensitive and susceptible people in the population. So there have been a, a debate in some groups of uh, people about uh, how effective they are the containment measures, the social distancing. Um, and uh, I mean, we now have the experience of many different countries. Uh, every country has implemented different measures, some of those very similar, some of those drastically different. And um, from our experience, I mean, the experience that the world is collecting now at the moment from this virus and also from the previous experience, is that, I mean, containment, and in the case that there are many cases, um, kind of social distancing implemented in, 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 the, large, in the whole society, it's, it's quite effective. I mean, we know that it's, um, it's stopping the spread of the virus. I mean, this is taking some time to be reflected in, in, in the numbers and also the, the associated number of deaths. So uh, different countries, now we have the experience from many countries, from South Korea, from China, from Singapore, Hong Kong, a place in, in Asia, now many places in Europe that they have more kind of similar uh, responses and measures that have been taken and here in the US. So now we have numbers and we are starting to compare how effective and they are these measures. And, uh, but these measures are, are effective. I mean, we know that in some places they were able to stop even the, the propagation of the virus with very, very strong uh, social distance measures. So there have been a lot of uh, speculation about um, what is the origin of the virus. And there have been several theories. There was uh, even a theory that was suggesting that it was from extraterrestrial origin. There was a meteorite that was falling in China, and then from there the virus uh, came. So there are other theories that they are saying that it was escaping from a lab, and there are many different types of, uh, of theories around. But um, as I was mentioning, there is, we know many things about uh, these viruses. We know that and these SARS-like uh, viruses, like they are responsible for this outbreak and this pandemic, is very related to viruses that are circulating in other species. So it's very similar to viruses that are circulating in, in, in bats, for example, and there have been also some similarities with viruses circulating or they have been found in pangolins. So um, these viruses we have from the genome, we have a lot of information about how this is related to, to other viruses that are around. And all the information uh, that is needed to construct this virus, to, to, to understand the genome of this virus, is already there. It's in, in the natural world, in, in bats mostly. Okay. So I think with uh, more time and just collecting more, more of, uh, of these samples, we are going to learn many more things about how this virus is related to, to other ones. But we have all the pieces in nature. So, I mean, there is no reason why to suspect that this is not coming from nature.